The gospel this morning is from Matthew chapter 14, beginning with the 13th verse. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And like to invite the children forward for a children's song. There are a few back here. Come on up. Oh, and buddy, how are you? Good. Good. Let's sit. Let's sit. How are you, John? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for coming up. There's another one. Come on up. There's plenty of room. All right, so this morning we had one of my favorite gospel stories. Did you hear me read it just now? What did, what did Jesus do in the story? Do you remember? What did he do? You're nodding. Yes, how about right here? What did he do? Yes, he went to a town and he fed a bunch of people, huh? Yes, so he took two fish and five loaves of bread... And he fed 5,000, really more than 5,000 people. That's a lot of people. How many people do you think are in this room right now? A bunch. A bunch. Yes. Do you think it's more or how many do you think? 2,000. Well, maybe a couple hundred. Our, uh, have you ever been to a Gonzaga basketball game or anything at the McCarthy Center? Yeah? I was. Yeah, you've been too? Yeah, if you went up, you'd be lightning. Okay, cool. Um, well, that, so the McCarthy Center seats about 6,000. So Jesus fed just about that many people with a lunchbox. Our, our newly elected bishop talked about that. Two fish and five loaves of bread would fit in your guys' lunch sacks. And he fed all these people with that. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, and God does the same thing at our church today. He brings our gifts of offering our time and our talent and our treasures and he multiplies it to feed multitudes. Can I get an amen for that? Okay, amen on three. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. Okay, you can do a little better than that. Can I get a loud amen on three? One, two, three. Amen. 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 There it is. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being a God that multiplies. Like last week with the mustard seed that turns into a great tree that provides shade. And this week with two fish and five loaves of bread. Thank you for feeding the multitudes. In your name we pray. Amen. Now for your snack this morning, we brought goldfish so that you remember the fish and the bread that Jesus multiplied. So if you want one, you can take one back to your seat with you. Oh, now here we come. Do you all want my man? No? You're good? All right, would you bow your heads and pray with me? As the rain and snow come down from heaven and water the earth, causing it to bring forth and sprout, giving so seed to the sower and bread to us eaters, so too be the word that comes from my mouth, O Lord. May it not return to you empty, but accomplish that for which you purpose and succeed for the thing in which you sent it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So 
So I read these great texts, some of my favorite, um, about a month ago, and knowing I got to preach them this Sunday, I began just listening and looking for how God was at work and how he was revealing himself through this story. And I found that he kept showing up with hungry people. And I kept thinking about the over 5,000 hungry and sick people in our gospel reading. These people all gathered around Jesus, hoping to get a small piece of what he had to offer. And that kept being a theme that I saw over and over again. I'll share a few examples with you. Here's what I mean. So the Miller family, they often sit kind of over on this side. And when they come forward for communion, when we're around the altar, usually the usher stops them right about there till there's room around the altar for their family to come up. And usually... Aaron or Amy are holding on to Owen till the usher lets him come forward. And as soon as there's a spot open and the usher goes right this way, Owen mad dashes to the altar, just like he did for the children's sermon. He comes running forward. He knows what's being offered at this table. And sometimes he's so excited, I worry he's going to take himself out on the altar railing. But he runs forward excited for what's to offer. That's an image I will hold with me for the rest of my life. Here is a hungry child of God. Another example, and I hesitate to tell you because I don't want to take away stories from our youth who are in the Dominican Republic. Um, They'll share their stories the Sunday after Labor Day, September 10th, so you'll hear much more. But just maybe one little story. When we were down there, we saw children who were hungry. They were hungry for attention, hungry to play, and hungry for the sweet treats that we brought down. One day in particular, after playing baseball, braiding hair, playing with the kids, the Children of the Nations, the the organization we went with, had the kids line up single file to receive some lollipops that we had brought. And to prevent the swarm, they were supposed to be in single file, and like American kids, they were kind of jostling for position in line. And they came forward and they held their hands out for a couple pieces of candy. The beauty of it was seeing their reactions once they got one of those suckers, one or two of those suckers. Most of them had them in their mouths within a second. Others held them there and cherished them for two seconds before putting them in their mouth. And still others held them up real quickly like they just won a championship trophy and celebrated before quickly putting it into their mouth. They were so joyful. This is an image I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Here were hungry children of God. But sometimes being fed is a much more somber affair. We don't need to go far to find people who are hungry in their stomachs. But there's also a hunger of the spirit and of the soul that is part of the human needs of sustenance. In the last month since I prepared for this sermon, I've personally walked through these doors hungry. Maybe most hungry when I walked into one of the several funeral services that have been held this summer at St. Luke. I came along with many others needing a morsel of spiritual food. I was hurting. I needed to be reminded of the promises of our baptism, of eternal life, of salvation. Maybe you too can think of a time when you've been, you've come hungry. Maybe it's this morning that you've walked through these doors needing, craving, hurting for a bite of nourishment. This is a house where we come hungry. Week after week we come wanting to be filled. And we, are, we gather around Jesus, hoping to get something from what he's giving out. Which brings us to the point in our gospel reading where Jesus has compassion for these people that are gathering. And he begins to heal them. The Greek word for compassion means to feel deeply in your innards, your guts. And in this case, Jesus feels something and is touched to the core. And, it, and intervenes. And we'll pause just for a moment to think about what he does. As we've traveled through thousands of years in the Old Testament texts, from the flood to delivering the Israelites from Pharaoh with the plagues, to taking the 
Israelites through the Red Sea, parting the waters, then leading his people through exile. God shows great strength and power and deliverance over and over again as he keeps his covenant with his people. And then when God takes on a body, becomes human flesh, and is Jesus, he's so deeply moved, so moved in his insides, that his miracle of choice, the muscle he chooses to flex, it's his heart. And he heals people and restores their bodies. And then is further inspired to feed the multitude's growling stomachs. And he shows his majesty not by feats of power like before, but by healing, providing lunch, and teaching. And then as we read on, we get to verses 15 and 16, and after Jesus is moved with compassion and is healing this multitude, the disciples come up to him and say, Jesus, we're in this deserted place. We're getting hungry. The people are getting hungry. It's getting late. You need to send them away so they can go buy their own food for themselves in the villages. I think if Jesus rolled his eyes at any point in the gospel reading, it was probably right here. I imagine in an almost sarcastic tone, he flips it back on the disciples. They don't need to go, to go away. You give them something to eat. And the disciples say, but we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. But they bring what they have, and the miracle happens. Jesus multiplies this, and then gives that bounty back to the disciples, who give it to the multitude. Give it to the 5,000 plus. And that's one thing that makes this gospel account different from the others. This gospel, this miracle happens in all four gospels. But this one is unique in that he gives it back to the disciples. And that's what makes it so relevant for us this morning. After being stirred up, moved with compassion, Jesus multiplies and inspires in us. And then he enables the disciples, us, to feed the hungry. To feed one another in this room. To feed our brothers and sisters outside this door and even feed around the world to the ends of the earth. Brothers and sisters, God feeds you, and God feeds through you. I'll say that again. God feeds you, and God feeds through you. And I've seen it continually happening here. It is in this meal we're about to share. Just ask Owen. We, like Jesus, are called to bake bread, pour the wine, set the table, hear the word, and then come forward. And then the miracle happens. Our Lord multiplies these gifts. As we eat this bread, we receive the body, Jesus himself. And we taste the wine and we receive Jesus' blood. And then we are transformed. It is multiplied and we are given grace. Our slates wiped clean. We're given the kingdom of God right here at this table. And it's in our congregation's generous support of the 27, 27 high school youth who travel out of the country, sent down with donated baseball gloves, hats, and 200 smile hygiene packs. Our youth have been so financially and prayerfully supported. Then God multiplies these gifts, these fish and loaves, and they return abundantly filled, heartbroken, grace-covered, filled with love, and deeply moved. Baskets are overflowing. And it's the feeding of the local stomachs that happen here all, around, all, all year round. Yes, I mean in the meals that we share together, but also in the hundreds of pounds of food that is donated to the Mead Food Bank. And many of you volunteer with the homeless and hungry in the, in the town. And the spiritual hunger that many of us have felt or we remember feeling. A stabbing, hurting type of hunger. Of course, like physical hunger, we're hungrier at some times rather than others. But you can, when you can feel and see God at work. And you come week after week to hear the good news, to be fed. And through your love of one another, and through the word that is alive here, setting hearts ablaze, God is on the loose, and he's doing work. As you can see, God is a multiplier. 
he feeds and he feeds abundantly. And God's love is like that. It's like the mustard seed last week and the feeding of the multitude this. It doesn't look like there's enough. But we forget what an incredible God we have. So I pray that as you continue to come to this house, you come hungry. As we come to the table today, hold your hands out, taste, touch, smell, feel, and see. This is God in your hands. And God, knowing that we are body and spirit, will sustain you through this meal and then be prepared to be impacted to the core, to have your heart opened, to be one who extends this food wherever you go. Amen.